I'm here with Dr. Romano to do conversion problems. Hi, I'm Dr. Romano, I'm professor of organic chemistry here at Romano Scientific and the creator of the Orgo Man products and the author of the Dat Destroyer book. I'm here with Professor Blois today to work on three type of problems you're surely going to see on the Dat exam, and that's conversions. This is considered a fairly easy problem, but nevertheless, we want to make sure that we can go through this and check this off our list on what to do for the math. All right, Professor, if you can do the problems. Professor Blois here. Conversion problems do appear on the DAT. So let's go through one of these, and we're going to go through dimensional analysis as we make our conversions. Let's read the first problem. If one kilometer is approximately five-eighths of a mile, and one mile is 5,280 feet, approximately how many feet are there in eight kilometers? So what we want to do, we want to start with eight kilometers, let's make a fraction out of that, and we want to wind up with feet. That's our objective to the final uh, units of measurement will be feet. Okay, so what's our first conversion factor going to be? I know that I, one kilometer is approximately five-eighths of a mile, so I want, a, I want a conversion factor with one kilometer in the denominator to cancel the kilometer in the numerator that I start with. One kilometer is equal to five-eighths of a mile. So as long as these two, unit, these two measurements are equal, they're the, they're the conversion, this conversion factor only changes the units of measurement rather than the actual size of the measurement. Okay, so now, uh, dimensional analysis, we cancel off the kilometers, we have now expressed this uh, number in miles. So what do we want to do? We want to go from miles to feet. And we want a conversion factor. We're told that one mile is 5,280 feet. We want a conversion factor with one mile in the denominator to cancel the mile in the numerator from the previous uh, fraction. And one mile is equal to 5,280 feet. Okay. Now, let's see. The uh, uh, I'll write feet here. The two miles cancel. And just we pause a moment to do dimensional analysis. What units are we working in as the problem stands right now? Kilometers cancels out, miles cancels out. We're working in the units of feet. So we're successful in our dimensional analysis. We've used the correct choice of conversion factors where our answer is going to be expressed in feet. Okay, now all we have to do is multiply everything out. Eight times five eighths. Well, the eight is going to cancel, right? And we're going to left with we left with just five. So five times five thousand two hundred eighty. Since we're only looking for an approximate value, we can say five times fifty three hundred, and write the answer as what zero zero five times three is fifteen. Carry the one five five is a twenty five, and we have twenty six approximately twenty six thousand five hundred feet. Okay, our answer only need to be approximate. Let's go to the second conversion problem. One gallon of water weighs 8.35 pounds, and there are 128 ounces in a gallon. Approximately how many ounces are there in one pound of water? All right, so in this problem, we want to start out with one pound of water, okay? One pound of water, and that's what we want to start out with. What we want to wind up with at the end is the number of ounces, okay? So let's choose the sequence of conversion factors that are going to accomplish that goal. All right, one gallon of water weighs 8.35 pounds. So let's put our uh, 8.35 pounds. Uh, let's see, is there in one pound of water? 8.35, 8 we want uh, one pound, oh, what did I do here? 8.35 pounds in one gallon of water. All right. And our second conversion is that there are 128 ounces in one gallon. So I'm going to have one gallon here and 128 ounces. All right. Let's see what happens here. The pounds cancels, uh, the gallons cancel. So from our initial starting point of one pound, uh, dimensional analysis tells us that we're going to wind up with a value of ounces. So what are our, what are our values here? It's going to be 128 ounces over 8.35. We're only looking for approximate, so let's make this 8.4, and we can reduce that by making this 1280 over 84. Uh, 4, let's reduce this 4, goes into the numerator, let's see, 320 times, 
and four goes into the denominator 21 times. So this is approximately, oh, a third, 320 over 20 is gonna be about 16. So this is approximately 16 ounces, okay? So there's our answer for that question. Now let's do the next problem. And this is going to be a conversion from the teeniest measurement Angstrom unit, 10 to the minus 10 meters, barely visible to the naked eye. There are, uh, yeah, one angstrom is 10 to the minus 10th meters, and there are 9.5 trillion, or 9.5 times 10 to the 12th kilometers in a light year. Approximately how many angstrom units are there in a light year? Well, lucky we have scientific notation to make this uh, calculation easy. All right, we're going to start off, off with a light year and through a series of conversion factors, wind up with angstrom units, whose symbol is the A with a little circle around it. So what, let's see, one light year is equal to 9.5 times 10 to the 12th kilometers. Okay, we're gonna start with that. 9.5 times 10 to the 12th kilometers. All right, and since angstroms is expressed in meters, we wanna convert from kilometers to meters, so I know that one kilometer is equal to a thousand meters or 10 to the third meters. Notice I chose the conversion factor such that kilometers is in the denominator and cancels out kilometers in the numerator. Now I'm gonna use my final conversion factor. I know that one angstrom unit is 10 to the minus 10th meters. So I have 10 to the minus 10th meters in the meters in the denominator to cancel meters in the numerator. And that's equal to one angstrom unit. So as far as our dimensional analysis is concerned, we are dealing in units of angstroms. So let's uh, uh, simplify this. This is going to be 9.5 times 10 to the 12th. A thousand is 10 to the third times 10 to the third. And when we bring up the 10 to the minus 10th from the denominator to the numerator, it's going to be 10 to the positive 10th. So our final answer is 9.5 times 10 to the sum of each of these powers of 10. 12 plus 3 is 15, plus 10 is 25. 9.5 times 10 to the 25 angstrom units. That's a heck of a lot of angstrom units. And that's how to do that problem. Okay, good work. Hopefully you guys got a good idea. So what I would do as far as the math goes is to start going in sequence. So that if you can check off, then you can do your conversions, check it off. If you can do your fractions, if you can do your decimals, your percent, p-value, questions, comparisons. So start making some little check marks off and then little by little, whittle away at it. And I think you should be able to do fine in this section. All right, good day to you and I'll see you in study group. Bye-bye.